Welcome, listeners, to www.ironradio.org, the website and podcast for all things strength sports and sports nutrition. With your hosts, Lonnie Lowry. Remember, Phil is like a gnarled old oak tree held together with scar tissue and bone spurs. Rob Fortney. And I'm telling you, the pain that I would suffer was ex- beyond excruciating. And Phil Stevens. Do it, Rob. Right. You'll kill all those nerves. Thanks for listening. Good morning, everybody. Go to strengthguild.com, S-T-R-E-N-G-T-H-G-U-I-L-D.com. Scroll down to the Iron Radio Collections, and we've got new shirts and new banners for you to support the show. Everything from just a regular banner, regular shirt, to ones with sayings on them, like Lonnie's Phil is like a gnarled old oak tree shirt. And some news for you, we're going to have some contests for people who own these shirts and things. So if you support the show, we'll let you more on that later. So if you get in on these early, you can be one of the first people to win some prizes. So, thank you very much. Go check out the site, strengthguild.com. Scroll down to Iron Radio Collections and support the show. Welcome to Iron Radio, everybody. This is Lonnie Lowry. Today we have a special episode of sorts. We're just going to join a phone call between uh, Phil and Jim Wendler. They'll probably talk about all manner of things, so enjoy. What's going on? Oh, just waking up, getting on. How's your fat ass doing? (laughs) I'm ready to be done eating. So, yep, yep. You know, one week from today. So, yeah, you're 700. What do you do? For two? Yeah. Three. Just two. That was good. That felt good. It seemed like, uh, <clears throat> for whatever reason, it seemed like you had some zeal in life on that set that I hadn't seen in a while. Yeah, it feels good. Everything's been feeling, uh, feeling pretty easy. So, uh, deadlift sucks. Just getting to the bar. But <laughs> once I get down there, the uh, you know how that shit goes, dude. Uh, one lift goes up, yeah, and everything feels great. Yeah, and uh, I mean, is it just getting to the bars? Do you, do you feel weak? No, I feel good. No, I feel good. It's just getting down there sucks. But like I pulled, I did that seven hundred for a double, and then twenty minutes later pulled six fifty. So uh, ain't bad. The, uh, so. You know, it's funny because I, uh, for our football team, we do like uh, two main main lifted days during the season, and then we do three recovery days, and two of the recovery days are yoga. Oh, okay. And I and I, and I put these kids into positions. I look, I'm like, man, my even today, my stomach, there's no way. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's, I don't have a you know massive stomach by any yeah. means. It's not like I'm thin. But I'm like, man, I get all jealous. Yeah. They're like all their fault. Twisted up like a pretzel. But. Oh, God. So. Yeah. How about yourself? How are you doing? Good. We, Good. Uh, we finished the season last night with a heartbreaking last one point loss in the last point five seconds to a oh. town rival. Oh. So uh, we still made the playoffs, but I think we drew the short straw and we got the number one ranked team in the state. Oh, good. Good. If we and if we yeah if we would have won we would have had a home playoff game and, home you know, game home against field advantage. home field advantage of probably playing nobody somebody horrible if you want yeah so, so uh, it's just tough you yeah know. and you know we uh, <clears throat> we could talk about a little bit of this but you know yeah. during the game we have about eighteen kids play that's so. it. That's not yeah, a lot of kids. That means, no. I'm talking total. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> a, lot of people, have, a lot of people going uh, both ways. Yeah, most <laughs> everyone's going. Everyone goes both ways. It's just we have to sub some people out you yeah. know, to give someone a little break. Yeah. And then our quarterback doesn't play. Uh, Defense. We try not to let him play both ways to keep gotcha. him from dying. Yeah. Uh, but uh, And then we obviously we lost our one of our top players. Uh, so we only had one real injury this year. That's good. And uh, right, that's pretty fucking good. It, yeah. You know how it, it, one injury in our team is like devastating. It takes basically two positions. Yeah. And uh, but uh, what's even uh, I guess more interesting is the more because I get I've been talking to more and more coaches. You know, they'll email me or uh, set up some kind of meeting. And they're always amazed at how we, we run very consistently during the off season. Like mm-hmm. we'll 
as soon as this season's over, we'll start running again. But we do we run just very little. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the they're all their big thing is like, well, you know, our coach wants us to run more, or we run the spread. I'm like, dude, our kids go both ways. Mm -hmm. Your kids go one way. How much running do you really need? Yeah. And uh, I've watched your drives. There's three and out most of the time, buddy. <laughs> yeah. You're not having you know? a 15, 15 minute drive going 100 yeah. yards. So. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> which we do. And then, you know, it's just a very interesting. I can't imagine how even less we would have to run if we, if we truly platoon. Like we had, you know, 30 kids on both sides of the ball. Yeah. Where you could just, you know, my God, training would take no time. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, so. Well, the kids tend to run a lot yeah. in practice anyways. I mean. Yeah, but even during the, you know, the, the main thing I, I remember when I, <clears throat> when I would run, and then I remember the, like the first time I picked it up in the last, I don't know, 15 years, I was like, fuck it, I want to try to run a mile again. And I finally did. And I remember the big thing was not the long so much was like my knees and ankles. Yeah. <clears throat> and stuff like that. And so I, my main goal with the uh, running is obviously we want to maintain whatever shape we're in, uh, which doesn't require a lot. But the... Uh, want to make sure their ankles and knees and all that shit and their shins don't get sore. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's the first time back after the game, all this fucking weight and you know, look at whatever. Uh, yeah. So. When, uh, where, where, where is your meat, by the way? Isn't it, I assume it's in California. Yeah, it's out of Burdick's place. So, okay. CSA gym. Yep, yeah. We'll fly out there Thursday. So, way in Friday morning. So, I'll get there late Thursday night. Way in Friday morning and then lift Saturday morning. Is it just one day? Nope, two days. What is it? Two twenty and up is Saturday. One ninety eight and below, and women is Sunday. So, ah, they did it the opposite. That's good. Yeah. So they put the big boys in the in the, on Saturday. Yeah. So <laughs> yep, should be a good time. Uh, but I'm gonna do one a year. So I'm backing down to that. Yeah. Good for you, buddy. I. I watch, I, I could, uh, every time I see, I just get heartburn. <laughs> I'm living you know? with it right now. Uh, uh, I'm just eating like, baking uh, soda. Yeah, and it's funny because I, <clears throat> you know, back pumps are horrible. Like, you're yeah. useless as a human. Oh, yeah. Right? yeah I'm, I'm horrible right now. Yeah. Like, hey, can you spot me? You're like, no, you don't want me spotting you. But you just deadlifted 650. Yeah. That was like an hour ago. I'm worthless <laughs> for those eight, eight days. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And, uh, yeah, I just, uh, so I get, you know, how much uh, discomfort I was willing to, to put up with in all phases of my training career. Yeah. It's like I, I'm willing to put up with discomfort during the set. I'm willing to put up with fucking soreness now. Like I always have been. Yeah. I've been sore most of my life. I realized that the other day. Like, you know, just <laughs> I've been sore. You know, in, in some capacity. Uh, anyway, but like the low back pumps, dude, and mm -hmm. the uh, the nighttime heartburn. Yep. Uh, the feeling like I I feel like like eating. You know, the full feeling. I hate yeah. this feeling now. Yeah. And. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty over it at this point. I'm just ready for it to be here and like eat a salad. But. <laughs> yeah, I'm up. I'm up two, three times a night taking a teaspoon of baking soda. Oh. Uh, right. And then, yeah, just, oh, yeah. Uh, just sleeping up. Yep. Like, Would you hurt your shoulder? No. <laughs> <laughs> I had something with, with some marinara in it. <laughs> but, yeah. It's, and 308's not happening. You know, I'm at 277 now. So, yeah. You know, you're, it's how, how old are you? At? 42. Yeah, your body's got some homeostasis going on, dude. Yeah, and it's just, I made it up to 288, <laughs> and it was like, nope. You're not going and anywhere. How, and where, how fast did you get down again? Oh, I like did dropped in. Yeah, and and I if I don't eat for a day, it just <laughs> it falls back off. So, so yeah, I'll just lift well, two seventy five. Yeah, there's no. Uh, oh my god, are you taking big fat dumps or is it just runny? Oh, it's it's just shitting all day, three four times a day. Yeah. So, yep, 
and then this lady in Rutgers is studying my poop, so I got to mail it off to her. So that's kind of interesting. But you should. Do you have to mail every poop you take? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> then you then you call her up and be like, "Hey, does what is it? Uh, the skid mark? How big of a skid mark in my underwear <laughs> does it count for me? Have to be a two." <laughs> uh, no, you basically. Send your photos? <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, she had me send her a food her. log. She had me send her a food log, and I think she was kind of amazed. But uh, it was just all the shit all the time. But uh, no, apparently they've never they've never studied anyone that purposely wanted to gain like forty pounds. So did uh, <coughs> she's like a like a female chubby chaser. Yeah, I don't know. But she she always tells me like I'm sorry for my poop fetish. It just really interests me. So she's always texting me about poop, but. Yeah, after the meet's over is when I got to send her. Every two weeks, I got to send poop because they want to see how fast oh, wow. how fast it gets better when I start eating real food. So, how and what what are they looking at? Like they're looking like my my shit. gut my gut biome, biome. and yeah. yeah. So because oh, we pretty cool. much knew it was going to go really bad because I'm basically eating just you, shit all the time. So are you are you taking like a what is it called a probiotic or no, anything like that? Or no, no, I don't have anything like that. No. Nope, the closest thing there's I have no to that way is like I could do that. What you're doing without that shit, dude. Yeah. I mean, I Are probably you, should. It'd probably take... help, but. Right. <clears throat> I just, I think that got rid of a lot of my heartburn. Yeah. And uh, it got rid of a lot of the uh, <laughs> less than, less than uh, uh, hard stool. <laughs> yeah. It brought things together. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. It was like Martin Luther King of the uh, supplements. <laughs> you know? Yeah. But, yeah. No, other than that, man, it's going good. We're bringing seven lifters out there. It'll be good to see Jesse. Um, and the whole yeah, place is on fire. But <clears throat> Oh, uh, what is? Uh, Northern California. California. Yeah, it's all on fire out there by him. <clears throat> so last uh, week they had like a mandatory power outages. But So we'll what? see. What ha like I assume it's a forest fire. <clears throat> well, forest fire, and then right near there, they had that earthquake like a week and a half ago, and it lit an oil refinery on fire. Oh, so man. dude, I don't, I haven't heard any of this. Yeah, so, so it's how do they have that. a forest fire? They don't clear the brush. Do they not learn anything? I don't know, man. It, it's always on fire out there, so they're losing all kinds of houses. But <clears throat> people are moving out of there anyway. Yep, it's so. California. It's either shaking or on fire at all times. So. Yeah, people are people are crazy. So, are right, both your kids going out with you? No, they decided to stay this time. Um, they were going to go out, but we're going to hold off, and we're taking a longer vacation for Christmas. We're going to take like twelve months. <laughs> so, oh, you guys aren't coming. We're going to be in California for like three weeks. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> originally it was a day and a half. Yeah. So, uh, no, we're, we're gonna to we're gonna take them out to Yellowstone. So we're gonna spend That's a fucking week, awesome, man. week out there. So, yep. I, uh, my, I think my parents took me to Glacier National Park, mm -hmm. which is uh, Yellowstone is right below it, I believe. Yeah. Because Yellowstone is, uh, where is that, Montana? Montana, or, Wyoming. Both. Yeah, yeah yep. I've, I've been to both those places. Yeah. I, this is my, <clears throat> we hiked for like two weeks, you know. Yeah. And you have to wear like bear bells. Yeah. Uh, you know, so the bears always hear you coming. And I, it, the last maybe, I don't know, quarter mile of, of uh, two weeks, I finally saw a fucking brown bear. <laughs> I think it was a brown, yeah, it had a bit of brown bear. And I, I, you know, I don't, it wasn't huge, but you have no idea how fucking helpless you are. Oh, yeah. And, see, <clears throat> and it was, I don't know, maybe I'm going to guess 60 yards away from me. Uh, so I felt like, big, like holy fuck, dude. Yeah. Uh, because you know, have you seen the movie The Revenant? Yes. You know the bear yeah. attack scene. Yep. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> you can do all the jujitsu you want, my friend. <laughs> all the squats. Yeah. You know. <clears throat> and you put it in perspective. If you had your Glock on you, it wouldn't make a dent. No. You know, that's the worst. Maybe unless it went right through its nose or something. The, the worst one I had was, was I was hiking in Montana and scared up a moose. Holy fuck. 
Those things uh, are fucking huge. Giant. And I had no clue until it got up. I was like, oh, my God. And I was just lucky. I was in the a bunch of trees. The legs keep on bending? Yeah, exactly. Right. And he was pissed. You know, I woke him up. And <laughs> luckily, I was in a bunch of trees, and he couldn't fit. So his, his big horns ah. couldn't come after me. So, But, uh, fuck, that was... It's amazing how insignificant we are until you, you realize that when you run ah. a, a large animal. So There is a uh, video of some uh, fucking, I don't know, some assholes trying to get their picture taken with a moose that was crossing the street or something. I don't know. And this thing fucking went off because they were trying to give the selfies, you know, pick selfies and shit. Yeah. And that moose just fucking <laughs> ducked its head and catapulted these fuckers. Oh, it was beautiful. <laughs> Uh, uh, I wish there was like fucking knives, like yeah. bar knives. Or those people that, people. yeah, those people that get out and like try and mess with the buffalo and things like that. It's like, come on, yeah, what are you doing? Come on, put a saddle on that fucker. Come <laughs> <Yeah>. on. <laughs> uh, that's we were reading. We were reading reviews for Yellowstone when we were planning our trip, and somebody was bitching about that. They were like, "You guys need to train your bears better." And they weren't very what? friendly. Yeah, and it was like it's a fucking national park. They're not. It's not I a hope, zoo. <clears throat> I hope to God that was trolling. Yeah. So. Oh my God! You know Yogi Bear? It's not real. <laughs> you guys are assholes. Uh, <laughs> let's try and recap some of that show that we lost. Um, God, Talk we did. I know what that was. We did it for like Father's Day. It was all about being a, a leader or being a man and what that means to you. Woo. All right. <clears throat> so. I, I don't know what the hell I'm going to say, but, uh, <laughs> you know, it's, go ahead, I'll, I'll talk about it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of shit going on here. Uh, yeah. What, uh, all right, go ahead and we can start. Okay. Uh, I'm calm now because I, I was pissed off last night. Oh, <sighs> And I'll include some of what we just talked about on the show, but uh, yeah, 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 yeah. We'll edit that bonus out. feature. Exactly. So, um, no, I mean one of the big things I think everybody sees is just you talk about a lot is leadership and passing something on, and part of that goes into fatherhood, not only fatherhood but just with kids themselves and the kids you work with. So and. Uh, you know, if you, if you don't give a shit and you don't feel like passing on, then just then what the hell are you doing? Just leave the kids alone. So, I mean, you want to yeah, touch that's on that the a little old, bit? Uh, go ahead. I'll explain that one. Yeah, go for it. Uh, the uh, I got that from, uh, there's a wonderful documentary. I probably watched it, I don't know. Whenever it probably came out, it's called uh, The Other F Word. It was about, like, punk mm -hmm. and hard rock musicians from, like, the, I guess, the 80s or something. Uh, you know, who are all anti-authoritarian. Well, they took these same figures in the punk and hard rock scene, and uh, now they're, they're fathers. Uh, and, uh, you know, what's it like to be the person that you rallied against kind of thing? You know, that was the other F word, right? Being a father. Yeah. And uh, there was a uh, musician from, I think, the band Pennywise, but I, <clears throat> I you can't quote me, but it doesn't matter. Uh he said, uh, you know, for years I thought I was changing the world with my lyrics and my shows. And because then I realized it's pretty worthless. Uh, because if you want to change the world, you have to raise good kids. Yeah. And I, I was, I'm not saying that, <clears throat> you know, some of these bands didn't do good and they haven't spoken to people, right? Uh, and got kids out of hard times and their music isn't meaningful, but that really changed my perspective because I think a lot of us feel uh, helpless when you look at all the problems of the world. We're made to feel helpless, right? That's one of the reasons why the people want the big state to take over everything because we don't know how to take mm -hmm. care of ourselves. Only the government does. And we can go on forever about that. Though. Yeah. But I think <clears throat> when you understand uh, that it begins basically with yourself and your kids, you start to realize how much of a massive difference you can make. Um, and it, you know, I, I went through my existential crisis in my thirties where I, you real, like, it was like, Hey man, nothing matters. Right. You know, fuck it. You know, nothing matters. And it, and then, uh, I went to get like a 
cheeseburger at like Burger King and McDonald's, and they fucked it up, and I was fucking mad. I'm like, holy shit, everything matters. You know? Because that guy matters. Yeah. And I'm not saying that you don't, I'm not saying, you know, you should have the utmost pride in making the best cheeseburgers in McDonald's, but that guy uh, matters. The guy, because it affected me, then it, you know, the, the butterfly effect kind of bullshit. Yeah. And then I came up with the quote that I, I just pretty much ripped off from the singer of Pennywise. I said, if you want to change the world, raise good kids. If you don't have kids, coach, teach, or mentor. If you don't want to do anything, any of those things, keep your fucking hands off. Yeah. Uh, originally, it was stop diddling them. Uh, but Juliet made me change that. Cause <laughs> I have a... Uh, I, 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 I have like a tolerance for for a lot of stupid shit and bad stuff, but I don't have a tolerance for pedophilia or rape. Yeah. I don't think there's, I, I don't think there's a part in this United States for anyone that, and I'm not talking statutory rape, like 19 and you know 16 or 19 and 17 or whatever. I'm talking about real, you know, yeah. forcible, unconsensual sex. Um, and obviously anything pedophilia wise. Uh, Anyway, so, but that's really good on that. So what ended up, uh, so I, I took, and that wasn't like I was half-assing my dad, my role as a dad, but you start to realize how important it is. Uh, and not just, you know, teaching them lessons. You just got to spend time with them. And I, I was laughing with some of the coach. We have a new coach, new coach. We have a coach who's a brand new father. His son was just born like two weeks ago. And I told him, I said, listen, man, you don't have to stress out too much because there's plenty of babies who are born to fucking heroin addict and crack addict parents, and they survive. Yeah. Uh, so <clears throat> you don't need to be perfect. You just need to give a shit and give them some love, you know, and give them some, some direction and path. You know, and you're going to – how many times have you fucked up, Bill? And oh, yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. And they're still, they're still alive. They're very resilient things. <laughs> yeah. Um, but then this went into, you know, uh, for my, this is just for me, was, well, what else could I do? And I'm, you know, I'm doing a good, especially when your kids get a little bit older, you know, they need you a little less time-wise because they're out doing shit with their friends. Mm -hmm. And so that's when I finished write, <clears throat> writing my last book, Juliet wanted me out of the house because I'm just a nightmare to deal with when I'm writing and she, so, you know, she, she cloaked it in my libertarianism, like, hey, you know, we should give back to the community. She just wanted me out of the fucking house. <laughs> and, uh, you know, the good thing about being part of a small town is if you want something done, the parents do it. Yeah. And I love it. Uh, I love that. So I don't, we don't, like, we raised all the kids uh, and the parents raised all the money for our weight room. For gotcha. all the equipment and everything, so it's, you know football did all that. You know how awesome that is to know like this is our fucking weight room. We did all this. You don't get to tell us what we can and can't do. Uh, this is a, a product of the kids <clears throat> believing in what we're doing and you know doing the footwork of selling mulch every year and selling this and raising money and stuff like that. So, anyways, to make a long story short, I <clears throat> there was a uh, an offer for me to go coach. Originally, it was just football, but that has morphed into the strength and conditioning. Because I realized real quick, I do not have what it takes to coach football. Uh, and I, you couldn't pay me enough money. You couldn't, if you paid me $20 million, I still probably wouldn't. I, 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 the amount of time that these guys put in yeah. is unbelievable. And uh, the stress levels, especially for a college coach, now I'm in high school right now. Yeah. But they're out, you know, as soon as the season's done, they're out recruiting the rest of yeah. the year. And I don't want to be on it. You know, I have a family. So anyway, to make a long, you know, to, I know I'm not making this long story, this long story very long. I started helping out the high school. And of course, uh, originally, you know, you want to get them in great shape and you want to do everything efficiently. And part of me wanted to, was egotistical. Like I wanted to prove that I could still kick a ton of ass. And then along the way, you know, you're given these opportunities to teach them small lessons. You know, the, the biggest one I always teach is it's not your fault, but it is your responsibility. Yeah. That thing, that, it drives me nuts. And, you know, <clears throat> and, and, and in a team sport such as football, 
there's really not much more of a team sport of, more than football because there's dire consequences if you miss your block. Yeah. You know, it really is. It's not like, uh, it's just, uh, it's a real, you can have the greatest running back in the world, but if no one's blocking, it doesn't really matter. And you might have the greatest arm or most accurate arm, but if no one catches the ball or no one blocks, you're really screwed. So, uh, and always drives me nuts and say, well, so-and-so didn't get his, you know, his block. Or, you know, the task was harder than I thought. Or she didn't tell us what was, whatever. It's like, yeah, but it's, hey, it may not be your fault, buddy, but it's your responsibility to make yeah. a change. Yeah. And what that does is it puts the onus on you. You put the responsibility on you and your attitude and your reaction uh, to making things better. And now you own the situation. If you don't, if you pass the blame on everyone else, then you take no ownership in what you can do uh, later on to, rec to rectify the situation. And to be completely honest, all this shit I tell the kids uh, is pretty much me yelling at myself. And I think there's like this common misconception that I, you know, whoever has always got their shit together when it's not the truth. Like I'm, I'm still struggle every fucking day getting out of bed, you know, and putting my feet on the ground and be like, all right, here we go. Stuff like that, you know. Uh, so, you know, part of this is just me yelling at myself for being a pussy that day, uh, or pressing snooze once, it drives me bananas when I do that. Um, but, uh, but anyway, this is my way, and I love being part of this community. But the parents have been wonderful. The kids are just, the, you know, the greatest kids. This is the senior class. This is my first class I had from freshman to, to senior now. And, uh, you know, it's just amazing to, to be part of something like this. You see the kids mature and grow, not just physically, but holy shit, some of these kids' strength levels. When you, you know, it's hard to tell. If I brought you to the weight room now, you'd be like, oh, that's great. I'm like, well, dude, hold on. Let's, let's go back in the time machine. Yeah. You know, you got a kid who could barely bench a barbell, and he just, you know, bench pressed 205 for five at, uh, you know, 150 pounds. You're like, holy shit, that's pretty yeah. good. Yeah. You know, 205 in our head, you're like, yeah, it's a 45 and 35. That's a big deal. But for him, you know, and so, uh, and the one thing we've noticed uh, of all the disciplines in training, if you get a kid bigger and stronger, there's, besides the physical development of the speed, the agility, just from being a stronger athlete, the way that the kids carry themselves, mm -hmm. both on and off the field, is unbelievable. I just got a message from Dave Tate. He was at the barber shop. Now I don't know why Dave was at the barber shop, <laughs> uh, but somehow the football team got brought up because we've been very good the last couple of years and last uh, three or four years. And uh, the barber who had cut most of these kids' hair said uh, the way that these kids stand right now versus you know three years ago, mm -hmm. you know, stand it's in how they carry themselves is unbelievable. Now that's not just me. Mm -hmm. That's, the football team has a lot of moving parts. Uh, but to think that I had some kind of hand in that, yeah. it makes me very proud. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, yeah, you know who this is. Uh, so I'm here to tell you about uh, Dr. Mike T. Nelson's uh, new book, uh, Why You Should Eat Keto. I don't do it because, I mean, look at me. Come on, I'm fabulous and I'm fantastic. Anyway, you should text the uh, Keto ebook all in one word to 44222 to receive your free copy. Do it. Do it now. Can't stop feeling. Some of us don't understand how lucky we are to be living in this. Hi, listeners. This is Rob Fortress Fortney. I'm here to remind you that as the holiday season approaches and your thoughts turn to giving, we like you to keep Iron Raiding in your thoughts. 
Over the past several years, there have been hundreds of listener comments hoping that Iron Radio stays on the air for years to come. Iron Radio is here for you. But as with any public radio type format, the show is listener supported. That's where you come in. For just $4 a month, you become a supporting member, keeping your weekly dose of education, experts, and gym talk flowing. Just go to www.ironradio.org and click on the $4 monthly subscribe button near the bottom of the page. Or click the donate button at the right of the page for a one-time donation. You are the Iron Brotherhood and Sisterhood. Of course, not everyone can afford to be a supporting member or a significant one-time donor. But for those of you willing to pitch in $4 per month or $50 just once, we're about to sweeten the deal. Become a supporting member or major donor between now and January, and a limited number of you will receive a gift worth over $20. And we will never forget our existing supporters. Simply email me via ironradio.org, and I'll send you a free seminar from Dr. Lowry on how to significantly and realistically boost your testosterone levels. Help your iron brothers and sisters who cannot pitch in but deserve better internet programming in our sports. And happy holidays. Hey listeners, this is Dr. Lonnie Lowry. If you've ever had anyone critique you uh, on your protein intake as part of your weightlifting lifestyle, oh, you poor meathead, all that extra protein is going to rot your kidneys or weaken your bones or dehydrate you or give you gout or who knows what. Uh, There is a book available. You can simply Google CRC Press and Lowry. And what I've done is reach out to experts all over the world and create a book, a single compendium that you can hold up and say, this is why I consume extra protein. This can be very valuable when you're um, being quote unquote educated uh, by various professionals on the topic. Uh, There's an enormous amount of literature in this book on the safety, uh, the effectiveness, how protein works in cells, the history of protein and weight trainers, uh, much more. So again, please check out CRC Press and Protein and Lowry. You can just Google that, and uh, I do, full disclosure, I do make a small single-digit royalty on the book, but that's not why I did it. I did it so we can all have something, uh, our particular population, uh, to both defend what we do and to inform our nutrition and our eating. Thanks. Iron Radio is, of course, primarily a podcast. But over the years, there have been technical glitches calling for backup streaming and listeners who wanted the convenience of other sources of audio content. Toward this end, Iron Radio is now simulcast and backed up on YouTube. If needed, please search Lawnman07 or Iron Radio from within YouTube. There's not much video, but if you like to listen through YouTube on a Roku or other living room device, there you go. Like your weekly fix of Iron Radio? In addition to being a popular institute on iTunes, we are also on email. Simply go to www.ironradio.org and sign up for the voluntary email. You'll get a once per week email, no more, that's little more than the show notes and a link to the audio. So go for it. Well, and you're getting to that point now. I'm sure that you've had kids go away. Well, honey, yeah. and, oh, and then they and then they come back, and yeah, like I had one of my kids come back, and he's in his third year of playing Division One baseball, and just to meet him in a grocery store and to see him. You know, I got him when he was 13, and yeah. now he's 21, and he's you know. Hi, Coach Steven. How are you doing? <laughs> and, and to see him like, come back. And, on? Yeah, thanks for all your help back then. You know. <laughs> That's, don't hug me. You're going to kill me. Uh, yeah, it's those those little things, man. Add up. and uh, Yeah. And, you know, I don't uh, – I, I like the – like I said, I like the fact that I feel like I've proven – not just to meet other people that, you know, I can do this. Yeah. But uh, I'm not going to deny that. Like, I'm not going to be a – you know, it's all selfless. Yeah. Because that's 
fucking stupid. Uh, but it does give me like I like I could make a real difference because I've said this a million times. Like when I was at uh, Elite FTS, we I, the amount of questions we would answer on a daily or a monthly basis was so massive. Mm-hmm. You know, it was something like a, a thousand a, a month or something that I would answer personally. Yeah. And you think you're doing good, and you are doing a good job, but there's something about being with someone, not just for eight weeks or six weeks. There's something about being with a kid for four years and, and helping and, and developing that you can't get anywhere else. And, you know, not just uh, giving advice over the internet is very difficult, you know, because the yeah. advice I give is just general, I and mean, that's the best I can do. Yeah. Even when, you know, how someone will explain a situation, like, I don't know, man. I got to, I got to know you, brother. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Well, and on the internet too, you know, they're probably asking seven other people the same question and they're not going to listen. Yeah. Yeah. They're going to listen to the the answer that they want. Yeah. But you know, sometimes like I had a kid, uh, who lives right down the street from me and he's like, Hey coach, I think it's time that I reset my trap bar. Uh, cause they get to a point where they have to let me know, listen, I think these weights are, I'm not hitting the reps I need to hit because there's rep goals. Mm-hmm. And I got, I was furious. I'm like, what the fuck? You know, I just was, I didn't yell at him. At that, but I was like, the hell kind of attitude is this shit? So I, this, he was, uh, he's a sophomore. So he was playing mostly JV. And as far as mm-hmm. I'm concerned, if you're not playing varsity, you train like through the season. I yeah. tell him, I don't care how fucking sore you get. We're going to train. Cause this is a time we can get an extra three or four months of training in where everyone else is not doing anything. Yeah. Now, you know, whatever. So you get it. So I, I, <clears throat> I gave him the, the same numbers he had, and I said, listen, do or die, you're going to get these reps. And magically, mm. he uh, doubled his reps. You know, like he went from eight reps to like 15 reps on the same weight. Mm-hmm. And I, cause, <clears throat> now, if this was on the internet, what would you say? Well, yeah, maybe it's time to reset. <laughs> yeah. you know, so, and I'm not saying that that's not always the, <clears throat> always the case is you just got to try harder, but yeah. it's because I knew the kid. And I knew, you know, psychologically, this may be what he needed. He needed to be pushed. And all of a sudden, dude, he walks around like he's the fucking cock of the walk, you know? He's like, fuck you, yeah, man. <laughs> and uh, so it, it's, it's, that's the way I see it make a difference, and, I mean, amongst a, a lot of other stuff. But, uh, and the other thing is, you know, just from a, a macro view as far as the town, the town is different now. Yeah. You know, it's a small town. We, the, the town doesn't live for football but it's still a pretty important part well not like we're like a small texas town but it's still important and when the town when the football team's doing better the schools like the the administration's a little happier yeah and well that's what i was gonna say i mean you guys are winning so that now it's even more important (laughs) yeah yeah (laughs) so and uh but you know there is it's nice uh just to be part of it so uh and I, you know, I give all the credit. You know, the kids do all the work. The kids are out in the practice field, and the head coach, uh, he was willing to at least listen to what I had to say. And as a strength coach, you know that's almost impossible. Yeah. And I give him all the credit in the world for. Um, hey, I said, hey, because he, 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 he's like, I just want honesty at all time. I'm like, all right, here we go. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> and uh, so it's very nice to be able to be part of something where your voice is heard and not just heard, but like, oh, you know what? Uh, his ego isn't so big that he wasn't willing to listen and change a couple things here and there. And I think it's made a difference. I believe it has. So, uh, well, and I mean, I know we've talked about the things you guys are doing. And, you know, part of the thing I talk to my kids about is like, yeah, of course, I'm friends with my kids, but but that's not my job. And I tell them that no. I'm the regular. My job is to make you into a decent human being. So there's going to be times I'm pissed to you and I ride your ass. <clears throat> but, you know, we lead by example, too. And, yeah. you know, one thing that you guys, you, you talked about was like, now with your kids, the <clears throat> they show up. <laughs> you know, like you were yeah. talking about, the, you had 100% attendance on like Christmas Eve or something like that yeah. for workouts yeah. and <clears throat> off-season programs. Um you help a few of these kids, you bring up that first class, and then that class leads the other class. Yep. And it's a snowball effect. 
<laughs> yeah, it, it's peer pressure in a good way. Yeah. And, you know, the, the one, you know, I get a lot of times people will ask uh, a lot of times. I mean, I get lots of, lots of these, you know, like, what are you guys doing for the off season? What are you guys doing for the end season? What about, you know, always about training? And I, and I said, well, this is what we're doing, but it doesn't mean you have to do this. And the most important part of any uh, group of people is the leader. Yeah. You know, we have the head coach who's obviously leads the football team. But in the weight room, he just defers to me. So I'm the de facto leader in there. And so I have to <clears throat> make sure that I am a great leader. And that doesn't mean I yell and scream. It means I, I, uh, I command the respect of the kid. I talk to them in such a way that they understand uh, I live my life in such a way that uh, they can understand and respect what I'm saying. I'm not just some dude up there spouting out bullshit. Um, I, de- I, I, because of this position, I have demanded more, res- more it compliance to certain ethics and, and ways I, I conduct myself just because uh, it, <clears throat> it starts with me. Um, and I always liken it to I explained this to the head coach the other day. Uh, you know, when the air <clears throat> in an airplane, when the cabin pressure drops, the masks fall down. Mm-hmm. And if you're traveling with a small child, what do they tell you to do first? You know, I don't know if you, yeah. you have to put your mask your on mask first. on first. Yeah, and then you help the child because without you having your full, you know, capabilities, they're, everything's screwed. Yeah, and so it's very much like that i have to make sure i'm taking care of that i'm doing the right things before i demand it out of anyone else now of course i'm not running sprints all the time and all that stuff but it's it's the, the bigger picture that i have to take care of and you know your group is only as strong as your leader uh and so that made me take a huge look at how i was uh just little stuff in my life and then it, you know it starts to add up um the positive changes you know just being uh like the big things, <clears throat> uh, making sure that I was achieving my goals every day, making sure that I was on time and prepared, um, making sure that uh, I was, and they didn't see this, but I think you can reflect in my personality that I was doing the things I needed to do at home and at work and stuff like that to, uh, <clears throat> so that I am prepared to be a great leader. I yeah. guess. So, um, and that obviously goes for being a parent too. You know, it's the same thing. And one of the things I always tell new new couples, I said, there's two things I will tell every couple, regardless of your relationship, is one, always date your wife. Meaning, don't fall out of love. Mm-hmm. Treat her like you know, like you the first couple months, you know, you're slapping her butt, and, or whatever that whatever that means to you. I don't yeah. want her just to be my friend. You know. Yeah. And number two is always live below your means financially. Uh, so that way, because most in a marriage, most of the you know, problems result are somehow stem at the center of money. Yeah. So if you don't have money problems, things, you know, and that means you just budget better. You don't buy as much, you know, you save and all that other stuff or whatever. Uh, the point being is in my family, I try to put my relationship with my wife first that doesn't mean I spend more time with my wife. I just mean that I make sure that we're solid because if we're yeah. solid, everything else seems to work out very well. And uh, it's, again, goes back to, you know, making sure you're responsible as a leader. So, anyway, it yeah. doesn't take a lot to, to, to do these things either. It's not like a major overhaul. So anyway, it's, yeah, it's, it's little there steps of showing up. And I know <clears throat> like a big one for me is like, I don't need to, it makes a big difference with, with my kids. I don't have to go in and, and lift heavy, but they just want to see that. I mean, they're doing it. You know, Phil, yeah. you know coach is yeah. still busting his ass. And he's old, yeah. but he can still fucking do it. And, I mean, that's people talk yeah. about that all the time with, with strength coaches. Like, oh, it doesn't matter how strong you are. And this and that. Uh, to those fucking kids, it does. You know, yeah. it, it, like, <laughs> it really does. I mean, if, if – if I was 140 pounds and I'd never lifted, but I knew all this book smarts about training, I, I wouldn't get the same. I, I wouldn't get the same no. reaction out of these kids. Now the you know. <clears throat> the good thing is uh, there is the power of YouTube and internet that the yes. kids 
Uh, and the other thing is we have the kids that have, uh, we had a kid who had a, tore his ACL during basketball, so he was out all season. So once he got cleared, we have a prowler date during practice. We pushed the prowler for about a mile um, around the field. And uh, I go out and do it with him. And uh, <clears throat> so all the kids, you know, the kids always, you know, are they lovingly, you know, laugh at him because they know exactly <laughs> what the prowler does. Yeah. And uh, but I'm still doing it, you know. And I, <clears throat> I, one of the things I always try to practice. And the one thing we're going to really preach this off season is uh, learning how to stand tall with discomfort. And there's nothing more just you know uncomfortable than after you push the prowler you have to stand tall yeah i don't want you slumping over it's just it's just mental strength so i make a point of it i never slump over it i always look like i'm ready to go mm. even though inside i'm like Fuck, man, yeah. um <laughs> but you know the kids see that too and so when i demand it out of them they're like well he's just talking shit i saw him pushing the prowler yeah. you know he's over there yakking his brains out i'm like no nah, you know I'll so you're exactly right. And it's like, I, I don't lift. I mean, I know you're getting ready for a meet and stuff. I don't lift any yeah. uh, terribly hard, but it, <clears throat> I think to get that, sometimes to get that mental edge uh, when you're coaching for me, I have to keep my body and teeth sharp. And that means training hard as I can. So I have that same remembrance and intensity when I ask the kids yeah. to train hard and I also don't romanticize well you know I used to do this and I went out yeah. and did this I'm like you know what I did squat pretty hard and I know running's going to suck guys so we're going to make sure we, we're not dumb today Yeah. instead of being uh, like yeah, that's nothing it's like eh, it is something <laughs> so it, 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 it keeps, keeps your mind from being a romantic about the good old days yeah uh, because there was never that many good old days. It's pretty much soreness and, and fatigue. Yeah, and like you said, I was learning how to deal with that. I mean, you've you've dealt with yeah, the, you've dealt with the shit, and you know where it gets you. And it's teaching them to deal with the shit. I mean, I yeah, I brought my daughter to work yesterday and let her help me, and she kept going right for her phone. And I was like, No, you're working. Oh. Leave the phone alone. <laughs> this is a job. It's not going to be good all the time. You know, it's going to suck. Yeah. But we just get the job done, and and teaching them, teaching her that if I don't have you doing something right now, the best thing you can do is watch. Just yeah. watch and learn. You know, put the phone down and watch and learn somebody doing something you don't know how to do. You know, <laughs> and it's little lessons like that. I mean, that uh, it's just part oh. of the game. So the phone's driving me bananas. I yeah. have to admit. Yeah. Um, we do uh, during the season. We do. Uh, Two yoga days that I run. I'm the yogi. Mm -hmm. Nice. <laughs> so I teach two yoga classes, which is basically me <clears throat> watching a bunch of yoga videos, figuring out what I can coach. Uh -huh. and I don't know the names of anything. I just I have make up my own names, <laughs> and uh, the kids always laugh. Like my mom says this. Like I don't care what your mom calls this. <laughs> it's you know whatever. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> but. I don't know where I was going with that. I don't know. But the whatever. Phones. So if anyone, if anyone wants to know some of our in-season secrets, we do yoga twice a week yeah. in addition to lifting twice a week. All right. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, so to make a long story short, after each yoga session, this is where I was going. Yeah. Uh, whatever time we have left over in the, in the school period, I turn off the lights and I let the kids lie down and relax. And the, the thing is, I don't care what you do. You just can't be on your phone. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I, we never had a problem with that. It's not like the kids are like, you know, cracked out on their head. Uh, at least this not, not these guys. So, um, ironically, that's where I catch up on all my uh, emails and uh, <laughs> direct messages <laughs> on my phone. But, you know, I'm using my time wisely. So, yeah. but yeah. Um, there you go. Yeah, and that's uh, a difference. It's, it's teaching them, you know. I mean, like a large part of my, a large part of my work now is on a phone or on a computer but yeah uh, and, and then you're bitching at them like get off the fucking computer you're watching youtube yeah. go out and do something uh well, there's, a dif there's a difference between having a job on the internet yeah and work on the internet <clears throat> and then uh, going down the youtube rabbit hole yeah exactly you start looking at metallica videos and all of a sudden you're watching uh 
a chef make uh, steak. You're like, what? <laughs> Three hours later? Uh, yeah. Mike. Well, that's Korean barbecue. Uh, yeah. I never knew. <laughs> Yeah, and I mean it's tough. I mean, you talk about it like in in your Y train thing. I mean, that's that's the big difference. Like, you know, Y train, we don't chop wood anymore. The kids don't have that, um, and they have they're so no. accessible to these electronic devices now, and it's yeah. tough, man. The the thing is, is training is this at least for the kids uh, should be. I would rather have them play a sport than train. To mm -hmm. be co completely honest. And if they were, were to play a sport, then I think they should train. But um, I think sport is much more valuable. If you're going to do one or the other as a kid, I think sport is much more valuable. Um, because I think it, it challenges you more than training ever could. Because you, with training, you're kind of, you have to, you only rise to the expectations that you have. Mm -hmm. When you're wrestling or playing football, you have to rise to the expectations that you never knew you had. Uh, and I think that's uh, something that training can't offer you until many years down the road. Like, you didn't know really how to push yourself, even though you thought you did. Yeah. But, but when all of a sudden you're playing against a guy who is league better than you, and you have to find some way, somehow, to get your shit together to battle for four quarters... That will push you in ways you never knew possible. Where, you know, if you squat and you have a bad day, you can just phone it in and be like, well, you know, I tried. <laughs> uh, that's, that's the most important thing is that I tried. Yeah. And, uh, you know, one thing I, I'll say is last night our kids lost with character. They didn't complain. Uh, they didn't pout. I mean, they were upset. Yeah. But we lost our, you know, our season finale by one point on a last-second field goal. And our kids lost with some character, and I think yeah. that's super important too. So, you know, competition, you know, I know this is cliche. You you learn more about yourself when you lose than when you win. Oh, yeah. And uh, it's, hard to, it's, it's, it's hard to lose, man. Uh, and it should be hard to lose. You know, like the old saying, <clears throat> uh, you know, show me a, a good loser and I'll show you a loser. That doesn't mean you have, but you can still lose with class. Yes. Uh, you know, what I mean by, you know, show me a good loser and I'll show you a loser. It's a guy who's like, well, that's just the way, you know, what can I do? Oh, I lost again. You know, and, and, yeah. And said, <laughs> we're going to, we're coming back. We're going to redefine our approach. Uh, maybe change this up. Uh, we need to, you know, our attitude needs, whatever. It could be a million different things. That's what a, a, a great, uh, man of character will do in a competitive situation. Uh, that doesn't mean you have to throw a fit. That doesn't mean you have passion. It just means you're immature. Using your failure as a chance to learn something. <laughs> yeah. so. And it's awesome, man, because yeah. all, you know, when my first year at London, we had, we won, I think, two games or three games. Two games, I don't know. I can't remember. And it was the greatest thing that ever happened to me <laughs> because I always say if we would have went five and five, you can start justifying, like, well, we could have won two more games, you know, mm -hmm. if this went here, or this one here. So let's not change anything because we're almost there. Yeah. It's when you, you kind of hit, it's like an addict when he hits rock bottom, mm -hmm. you know, when he starts blowing dudes for fucking heroin. <laughs> you're like, oh, all right, listen, this is. It's gotten bad. Yeah, is, yeah, it's gotten bad. And I think that, you know, when you, that comes, when that rock bottom comes, you know, you have to make some major changes. And it's hard to do, yeah. you know. And especially in sports and training, like when your bench starts going in the shitter, everyone's first reaction is just to put another day of bench in there. Yeah. Maybe more tricep work and all, whatever. Could be a million things. And <clears throat> from training, I've learned that this answer isn't always to do more, it's to do better. Mm -hmm. Find a way to do better. And that's what I think we did here at London as far as not just training, but, but our preparation, our practice and stuff. The answer is not always do more. I think that's kind of like a hard-headed, uh, almost naive approach. You know, it's like, well, if one aspirin's good, right? If one D ball's good, 15 must be better. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that's not always the case. Uh, you know, better is always better. Uh, yeah, and I mean, with, that, with... Go that ahead. That takes some introspection. And it, you have... To, <clears throat> 
but what that also means is you have to learn. You have to go out and, and seek stuff out. Oh, we got two stray dogs in our. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's the same thing with driven athletes. Generally, generally, at least what I find is not. It's definitely not usually more. I mean, sometimes it's getting them no, back, no. back to fuck off. You know? yeah. <laughs> when you get, especially yeah. those talented kids, uh, uh, talented driven kids, getting them to uh, hold off, hold off, son. Back off yeah. a little bit, you know. Yeah, but, and yeah. It's, uh, and <clears throat> it, it could be. Of course, I'm in my own yard, and these stray dogs are barking at me. <laughs> uh, it's usually it's uh, from an athlete, especially during the season. It's usually a recovery thing mm -hmm. and an attitude thing, and usually those things go hand in hand. If your recovery is better, your attitude better. If you're run down, you know you're you know how it is. You're, yeah depressed a little more you're not sleeping as well and stuff like that and uh, but of course the problem lies in with the sport coaches because are they willing to, to understand this yeah because most of the sport coaches are just you know fuck it you know their jobs are on the line we just need to go out to practice an hour earlier but, uh, you guys are gonna uh, run every day because we lost yeah yeah because <laughs> yeah, you guys were so tired yeah wait a minute yeah you guys are so tired we're gonna run you every day so you'll be ready to go well, next it, week. So. And it's funny because when I uh, when I look at school systems, like they have our kids for six, seven, or eight hours a day, mm -hmm. and I see how much my wife gets done when she homeschools our kids in like thirty-five minutes. Yeah, I'm like, my God! And then you know, my son goes to school half the day, and then she homeschools the rest of the day. Um, and uh, where, what the hell did it say? Damn it. Some of, uh, I'm such a doof. Uh, it's, and he gets sent home with tons of homework. He's in second grade. Yeah. Not tons of homework, but he'll have like 80 math problems a night. And I'm like, what are you guys doing at school? <laughs> he mm -hmm. has them there for, you know, five hours, you know, him, he's four hours. Like, what are you doing? That is, yeah, so you, you know, we get it done in thirty minutes. I, it's just very confusing to me. Yeah. Now I understand there's limitations, and you have bigger class sizes and all this other stuff. But it's just very interesting when you start to realize if you hired, if you had the money to hire a couple tutors, your school day could be three hours long. Yeah, you get more information, and your t kid wouldn't be a fucking zombie when he walks out. Yeah. So. But that's just my my big beef with the academic system. Yeah, that and time to move, man. Now they're doing away with recess. And, you know, holy oh, crap! Oh well, yeah, we just we just got the note home. You can't play tag at recess anymore. Yeah, yeah. So. Tag, you know how how evil tag is. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah so <laughs> I couldn't. Oh, my wife got the memo, and she was my son wasn't around. She's like, I let out all my rage. <laughs> I know, by myself and of course I get you know she tells me and I'm around James yeah. the young one and I'm just like what the moon <laughs> <laughs> what the hell's going on here yeah anyway but yeah that's neither than there so what else do you got going on no nah, what else do you got uh, going on you gonna do another book you gonna is the NOV book gonna happen yeah. anyway? I definitely want to do a book with the with the high school training Mm -hmm. uh, and high school coaching, because I think a lot of the stuff that, and I understand, I get it. Like they, everyone wants to know the program, uh, and I get it because we've run several different variations of the program, and miraculously, they all tend to work very well. Yeah. And uh, you know, the other thing is when you coach in a large group, it's much different than if you're coaching three or four kids, or if you're one on one. Yeah. Uh, so there's special things that need to to be accounted for. Um, so it's stuff like that and, and understanding kind of a whole, not just the principles, but just the philosophy and the way, even just presenting yourself to your kids. You know, I, I get that asked that, like, how do you get the kids to buy in? It's like, well, <clears throat> I think, you know, we talked about being a leader that starts at a very, it doesn't start the day you enter the weight room. Yeah. It starts by being a great leader yourself. And, and, you know, I always, like, there's an old thing that we always do. I always make the kids, I say, everyone here who's a leader, raise your hand. Yeah. And everyone needs to raise their hand because at least they're a leader to themselves first and foremost. And not yeah. be, you know, I tell my oldest son, you don't have to 
have followers to be a leader. Uh, so everyone needs to be a leader of themselves if you are ultimately responsible for yourself. Um, so stuff like that, I think, is super important to understand. And it, you know, instead of just the X's and O's. Uh, so, I mean, I, I'll give you an example. Is in football, everyone runs the same basic plays, you know, within reason. There's only so many routes you can run. So it's more about the coaching than it is about, you know, the X's and O's sometimes. It's more about get, getting the kids to buy in and maybe there's certain things you can say or, or how you uh, coach or the efficiency of coaching and stuff like that that's more important than just like, hey, in this situation, you have to run this. You know, so, uh, I think that's a big one. I mean, if the kids, yeah. the buying in. If the kids believe yeah. it, it's, it's like with any training program. If you got somebody that's like, yeah, I guess I'll do that, maybe sort of, and they're yeah. doubting it. If they're bought in, you're yeah. just going to do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yep. Well, fucking coach yeah, said do it. I'm going to do it. Coach knows what he's talking about. I, I remember a couple of years ago, I had to explain to a kid while I had to drop his training max, and I started explaining to him. And he goes, stop. I was like, what? He's like, dude, coach, I trust you. You're fine, man. Mm -hmm. And just grabbed his paper and walked away. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was like it was nice. I'm like, oh, thank right. God. He just, I just need to point and say, do this. Yeah. You'll be all right. So, anyway. Got Sweet. It. Well, it's been an hour, so we'll call it there. I think it was Woo. good stuff. Yeah. Well, hopefully, uh, did it record? Yeah, it's good. It's uh, been recording good, the whole time. time. Thank you, Phil, for having me. I appreciate it, man. Yeah. So it's always good to talk to you. I love uh, you, brother. We will call it there. <laughs>